to pitch it at. We no sooner get finished making the east side a safe and quiet place to live in than that has to start. Well, we're going to get rid of those muggers. We've got to get rid of them. They're spoiling our reputation. But the first thing I'm going to do is deputize each one of you guys to watch a corner. We'll do it in sections. Then we'll make up a bunch of signals. Hey, Muggs! Yeah. Muggs! Look who's here! What's that? He's my cousin on my mother's side. What's on your father's side? Mustard plaster. You're demoted. That's three times this week you've been demoted. You're not a lowest member in a club. Get out of here and take it with you. He wants to join a club. We ain't taking in any new members. Just wants to pay his dues in advance. Oh, uh, oh, Glimpy. Glimpy, uh, in fact, Glimpy, you're not demoted anymore. You got your old job back, in fact. Pay dues in advance, huh? Well, that's different. How old are you? Fourteen. How old? Fourteen. It makes twenty-eight. That's a little bit closer. When's your birthday? What do you care? You're gonna give me nothing. How do you know? I'm a very magnanimous man. You got a name? Yeah. What is it? Uh, 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 uh Think, think. Don't rush me. Uh, uh, it's trying to tip my tongue. Uh, I got it. Yeah, you got it. I'm Herbie. You're Herbie. Overwhelmed with yourself because you thought of your own name, ain't you? Overburdened with intelligence. Almost as smart as you are, Glimpy. I tell you. Yeah, my cousin. Wouldn't brag about it. You ever belong to any other clubs? Sure. What kind of club? I used to belong to an aviation club. Steady. I'm all right. Belong to an aviation club, huh? Yeah, I flew my own plane for two years. What happened? The rubber band broke. Are you sure you're going to pay your dues in advance? Mm-hmm. You know, I don't have to stand for this idle chatter. I'm the president of this club. Mm, pretty big man. All in favor of admitting Herbie to the club, say aye. 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 No. Uh, you're my cousin. Don't get excited, kid. His vote don't count. I thought you told me you're a big shot. What a liar you are. It's okay. Your vote won't count either. Oh, there's a little matter of dues. That advance. You know, I'd like a little advance on the advance. Yeah. How much you got? Ten cents. That's fine. That'll cover the first month's dues. After that, it's only a nickel a month. There you are, Glimpy. You're the treasurer. You'll be Glimpy's assistant. Okay. Say, Glimpy, let me a dime. I don't know you that well. Oh, please, let me a dime. Um... Say, Mr. President. Yeah. Here's another dime. What for? For the second and third month's dues. Hey, you're a pretty good member. Maybe you ought to make Glimpy your assistant. Just the initiation hat. How long do I have to wear it? Just for the rest of your life. That's a long sentence. Oh, why don't you make it easy on a kid, Chief? Make up about 99 years. I don't think I can do it. Just try the best you can. Perseverance is a virtue. As president of this club, I now demand that we break up a joint and an older meeting. Hey, Chief, I'm hungry. Let's go over to Ginsburg and get something to eat with my dime. What do you mean your dime? I just gave you two dimes. I loaned Herbie a dime. What are you, in a lending business? What do you think, this is a non-profit organization? You see, you worked on my good nature and I got hit. Don't come here anymore. This job may require a little diplomatic handling, so I better go in alone. I'll go with you, Muggs, in case you need help. Okay, but the rest of you guys stay here. I said the rest of you guys stay here. Oh. Have you located the trouble, Oscar? Yes, sir. I'll have it fixed in a few minutes. I'm going to the drugstore to phone. I'll be right back. Wait here. Yes, sir. Be right with you. Keep walking on your trap shut and you won't get hurt. No. Hey, fellas, come here. There's a mugging going on in that alley. Hey, Mugs! What's the trouble? There's a mugging going on in that alley over there. Yeah, let's go take a look. Heads up, man! Come here! Get him late. I think I'm pretty good looking at that one. Got 
took a swing at me. I think he busted his hand on that concrete wall there. He clipped me right on the jaw. Oh, Martin. You hurt, mister? Well, not too bad, I guess. Help him up, boys. All right, I'm coming. I think they sneak up behind you, mister. Well, unfortunately, I have an eyes in the back of my head. You ain't got a stiff neck, have you? You can look around once in a while. I didn't realize I was in such a bad neighborhood. What do you mean, bad neighborhood? Those muggers don't live around here. Well, have you noticed this neighborhood is as pure as Pittsburgh snow? But please, now, I'm sorry I offended you boys, because you really saved me from a severe beating. Eh, yeah, maybe a beating would have done you good, huh, Mug? Stop making with the cracks. Can't you see this guy's a gentleman? He's got on a white collar and a tie. Must be in dressed well. Well, I'm a shorn lamb at the moment, boys, but uh, if you look me up tomorrow, I'll take care of you. Here's my card. Ah, uh, forget it. We'd have done the same thing for any old Joe. Yes, I believe you would. Well, good night, boys. Good night, Take good it easy night. and good stay luck. out of dark alleys. Hey, what are you trying to call it up for? It's one of you telling me what to do. Oh, you told me. Let's look for that car. Yeah. Come on. Hey, Muggs, this is a traveling showcase the old boy's riding around in. I'll bet he'd have slipped as a saw about the piece if he hadn't been cleaned out. Yeah, I bet he would have. Wonder what he's doing down this neck of the woods anyway. I'll tell you what. What? You hold the wallet, I'll hold the money. Who's gonna hold you? Well, we've done our good deed for the day. We got nothing to worry about. Aren't you satisfied with the wallet? No, I should have the towel we're wrapped around. Oh, let's go get the wallet. Hey, Mugs! Hey, Look what we found! A million dollars! Maybe even a thousand! The Muggins must have dropped. Oh, boy, we're rich! As president of the club, I'll take charge of it. I'm treasurer. So what? You only handle the tinkling money. I take care of the cabbage. Well, what a club we're gonna have, huh? What do you mean, what a club we're gonna have? The first thing in the morning, this dog goes back to Mr. Hi-Hat. Uh-uh. Find his keepers, lose his weepers. Lose his weepers, huh? Well, you're the loser. Don't feel bad, Glimpy. Muggs is right. It don't belong to us anyway. I'm gonna take this down the club and hide it until tomorrow. Oh, Mark, let me hold it for a second, huh? No. Two seconds? No. No. On second thought, I think I will let you hold it. It's discriminating evidence. You boys keep an eye on it. Hey, let me hold half. It's a very small half. Hi, you saw it great, like institutionalized friends and stuff like that. Don't apologize. Let me get out of it. No, I go for your blood. All right, stand where you are, you mug. Hey, there's only one guy named Muggs around here, and that's him. Muggs, eh? It's a good name, and it fits all of you. Why do they always put new cops on his feet for? To clean up the mugging in this district. Wait a minute there. Where'd you get that? Got something I saved up from the Christmas club. I'll take care of that. Come on, you boys, take a little ride. We did a lot of we What about my constitution? After you, Jim. Oh, you want me to go first? Come on, boys, climb in. Oh, no, I didn't say his office. Bring his home. You know, the least you could do is let me get in touch with my mother. Uh-huh. Philadelphia lawyer couldn't get you out of this jam, Sonny. Look, Cap, if you took one look at my face, you could tell I got an honest kisser. Yeah, if you were to wash that face, maybe we could see a little better. What is this, a beauty parlor or a police station? And quiet, and quiet, quiet. Hello, Cortland's home? Yes. This is the Cortland residence. Oh, is this Mr. John H. Cortland? No, no, no. I want to speak to him. This is a police station. Certainly. Just a moment, please. Cortland, you're wanted on the telephone, sir. <clears throat> Hello? Yes, this is John Corton speaking. Was I mugged? What? Oh, you mean was I robbed? I certainly was. I intended to report it to you, but... No, no, you don't have to, Mr. Corton. We've already picked up the muggers. Now, if you can come right over to the station and identify them. Thank you. All right, Jim, lock them up. What do you mean? What do you got? You got to take him to his coffin? You got to take him to his coffin? You can't tell us what we're doing. Can't tell us what we're doing, because we ain't going to do it. Yeah, well, we ain't going to do it, see? 
You are to be congratulated on the prompt efficiency of your department, Captain. Ah, purely routine, Mr. Bartman. All right, now, boys. Uh, Why? Why not that? Uh, well, Mr. Cortland, see if you can uh, identify any of these youngsters. I can identify every one of them. Oh, that's fine. Splendid. See, he knows it. Quiet. What? Quiet. Well, why shouldn't I be able to identify them? These are the boys who rescued me. Oh, come, come now, Mr. Cortland. You're not going to fall for a run around like that, surely. Well, I never even saw the men who waylaid me. Oh, that's just it. I'm telling you, we caught these youngsters red-handed with your pocketbook on them. Ah, you're prejudiced. No confidence. I told you we found it. Certainly. He recuperated it from an ash can. Me and Hoiby. I'm Hoiby. Hiya, Hoiby. All right. Well, what's the purpose of arguing? You've simply made a mistake, Captain. I know that these boys are innocent. And if they say they found the pocketbook, well, I believe them. He that? He believes us. What'd I tell you about my honest face? Well, someone around here is simply dumb. I'll give you three guesses. One, two, three. I'm sorry this happened, boys. Uh, don't be so exhilarated about it. We all make mistakes. That's why they put erasers on lead pencils. <laughs> and you're mug. And they pick you up from muggy. That's a pretty good joke. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think man. it's very funny. Well, perhaps not. <laughs> well, here's your pocketbook, Mr. Gordon. Thank you. Maybe he'll give us a reward, huh? Yeah, maybe he'll give us enough to buy some gymnasium equipment for our club. Hmm? So you boys are interested in gymnasiums, eh? Well, now, I'll tell you what. You come out to my home in the morning, and perhaps I can arrange a reward for you worth your while. Yeah, but what about that, uh, with the measles? All right, right, now, now, boy, you're free. Go on, clear out of here. Go ahead. I should make you eat this. Bye, what I do now? Oh, I'll be seeing you later. Okay. Oh, leave my cousin alone. You're going to make me silly. Well, Captain, if I can be of any further service to you, just call on Hey, we almost got 30 years. We beat the case, don't we? Yes, sir. Hey, look at this. Hey, here's your dress. Let's get around. Such a big car. Can I give you a lift, boy? Take it. Let's go. Hey, free ride. Come on. Back here. No, thanks. We'll use our legs. They're safer. I understand. Well, good night, boys. I'll be looking forward to seeing you in the morning. Don't look too hard, because you may not find us. That's right. Get off, then. Right, what is it? Nothing we checking on me for. Hey, look, fellas, I'm a radiator cat. Did I just tell him to get off there? Yeah. Well, that means you, too. What are you Don't talk to my cousin Herbie. You might hurt him. I'll take your cousin Herbie and hit you on the head with him. No reward, no nuts. First guy ever spent his life driving around in a hurry. I'm telling you, there's no future in it. So we go up to this high hats house. So what? So maybe we'll get some money. Herbie's fresh out of money, ain't you, Herbie? Why do I care about Herbie? I'm in favor of forgetting the whole link in it. Not me. Look, Muggs. What's with that Muggs there? Mr. President to you. All right, Mr. President. The point is this. If we go up to this guy's house, maybe he'll give us some real dough. Then we can get some gymnasium equipment. That's right. Yeah. All, right, all, right. all right, all right, all right. So we'll take a vote on it. All those in favor of going up to this Cortland's house, say aye. 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 Oh, steamroller politics, huh? Why don't you yes, man? Go up there. But just remember, I was against it. The meeting is now consummated. Hey, if we get that equipment, I'm going to build you up, make you very strong. Hey, Cliffy, give it a buzz. All right, give it a buzz. <laughs> that, that, the bell, the bell. Who's the bell? Who's that? All right, all right. Why does it always take them so long to answer these places where they got money? That's the Hoyt Lord, the upper crust. The 400. Why is it 400? It might be 398. Yes. Yeah. Guess what? Do you wish to see someone? Certainly you wish to see someone. What do you think we're doing here? The boys would like to talk to Mr. Cortland. Yeah, tell them the boys are here to save this bacon last night. Bacon? Yeah, you know, moolah, cabbage, potatoes. You know, the stuff you buy food with if you got the points. I shall tell Mr. Cortland you're here. Uh, there's another entrance below this. Please to use it. Please to use it. What's the matter with this entrance? Maybe it's not wide enough. Maybe it's not wide enough. It's wide enough for him, it's wide enough for us. Used uh, side entrance there. I haven't done it since well, I worked at Ginsburg's delivery. Can you imagine us having to go through that side entrance? Most Bevan. Yes, sir. Has my son been called yet? No, sir. He was out quite late last night. Mm, out late again, eh? Who was that rang the doorbell? A crowd of urchins asking for you, sir. Well, why didn't you let them in? Let them in? 
I sent them down to the other entrance, sir. Well, you shouldn't have done that. They're friends of mine. Really, sir? Yes. Oh, you guys, we shouldn't have come down here in the first place. Maybe they're not all. Pretty bad service. That's uh, Fine, boy. He comes to this door, door, he's really going to hear from me. I'll let them in from below. I guess he changed his mind about seeing us. Yeah. yeah I guess. Let's, Let's go back to the club. Yeah, that's a good idea. Good morning, boys. 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 Good morning, Properly directed, disciplined, and what have you got? Apple pie. Well, oh, that's right, in a sense, apple pie. The kind that mothers make. You know, it typifies good, sound Americanism. Did you ever know a boy who liked apple pie who ever went wrong? Yes. Yeah. Used to love apple pie. Wound up with 43 bullets in his belly. Now, listen, you push-faced little sawed-off pickle, you. Whether you like it or not, I sort of like you. And don't ask me why. I told you boys I had something here I thought might interest you. So come along. By the time we oh, get around to it. Hey, I thought they only had these type of places in movies. This is where my oldest son uh, held court. But he won't be using it for some time now, and my younger son doesn't go in for athletics. It's all very nice, but where do we fit into the picture? It belongs to you boys, anytime, night or day. Oh, well, it's different. Let's oh. take a look. Oh. 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 Oh, this reminds me of the time I was in Central Park. Bought my fishing line with me, but I didn't need it because the fish would jump in the boat. All I had to do was hit him in the head with the oars. Hey, wait a minute. Look at me. I'm a cowboy then. Yeah, a Bowery cowboy. Hey, that's good. 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 Can you make this thing go long? There you go again. Always getting yourself in trouble. But I do now. You didn't do nothing. You just rattled up those two brains you got left. Nobody will be able to do anything with you now. Hey, tell him, tell him. I won't tell him nothing. You're wrong this time. Oh, that thing. I'll show you how a drugstore cowboy ride. Oh, she does. Uh... By the way, uh, Stephanie, did you send these boys down to the servant's entrance because uh, they weren't dressed, did you? Speak up, my good man. Speak up. They appeared hardly respectable, sir. He's just mad because we didn't have a monkey suit on like him. I beg your pardon? Oh, the prisoner type, huh? Look, I wouldn't give you a pardon if you faked all night. Well, never mind, Stephen. But hereafter, remember, my friends call on me through the main door. Just as you say, sir. Remember that, Zeppelin head. Time is a blue door. I'm going to try. Sorry, my good man. That was all boy a little awkward on your feet there, ain't you? Mr. Colton, you will please accept my resignation. I will not. You're fired. You can't do this to me. I have rights. I'll stand on them. Anything you stand on, second off, I'll beaten. That old boy, you excommunicated. Fired. Bounce out in your rear. My daughter will pay you off, uh, Spevens. I hope she pays you off in bagels. <sighs> <laughs> the boys didn't mean any harm, Mr. Cortland. I hope they ain't inconveniencing you by making you get rid of that barrage balloon. Forget it. I was going to fire him anyway. <laughs> well, what do you say? How do you like the, uh, uh, joint? Well, it's right along the lines of something we was going to put up in the clubhouse. Then it's a deal? Well, I don't know. How about that other son of yours, the one that's away? Well, he's overseas, flying for Uncle Sam. Yeah? Yeah, I thought rich kids didn't have enough smokes to fly. Shut up. Pardon the detrusion, Mr. Corbin. The secretary, chairman and president of the Eastside Social Improvement and Athletic Club, we wish to acknowledge and receive and accept this gymnasium for our personal use pro tem ad infinitum. Well, thank you, gentlemen. And here's the key to the lower door. And I'd like to donate $50 to the treasury of your club. A lot of money you've got. Let, let, let me hold on. Get away. $50. Ah, you're wrong. Yes? Why, certainly, dear. I'll be right up. Pretty nice day. See, there's going to be some regenerating done around here. We're all going to turn over new leaves. Yeah? What are we going to do with the old ones? Save them for posterity. Why don't you shut up? You see this? Yeah, what about it? 
Oh, uh, one Jane Kitt. Hey, boys, as long as you're going to be uh, in and out of here, perhaps you'd better come upstairs with me and meet my daughter. A good idea. How old is she? Oh, you're so mean. Oh, mean, huh? This is Louise Cortland. I want to verify my appointment for today. Yes, yes, thank you. Louise, I want you to... Father, what were you thinking of if I seven on a time like this? His nose was too high, but don't worry, dear. We'll get another butler. And another maid and another cook. They've all left with seven. And I'm to entertain tonight for Lieutenant the Frey. Some chicken. Father, you must be out of chicken. That's oh, pheasant. Blue-blooded pheasant. Father, Next week you go out with girls. Not this week. Friday, now, please. We have company. Oh, I'm sorry. Boys, I want you to meet my daughter, Louise. And she's really a very nice girl. Howdy, how are you? Hello, hello. Hello. Like to meet the gang. Flippy, Skinny Dave, Rocky, Lou, and Slug. Hey, you forgot Hoybee. It's all right, I forgot myself too, but let's not be technical about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to know you all. And I'm afraid I owe you an apology. But you see, all of our servants have left, and I'm entertaining tonight for a very dear friend. Yes, yeah, so we heard, so we heard. What did you say your name was? Well, I didn't say. It's Muggs. I'm glad to know you, Muggs. I know you too. I hope I see more of you. You will. You will. You see, your old man there, that is, your father there, he told us we could use the gym downstairs. That's a wonderful idea, Dad. Now, I hope you'll excuse me. I have a very important engagement. Bye. Happy yes, engagement. Sir. Good Stay luck, Roy. Happy engagement. <laughs> Let's go down and examine that equipment. Well, wait a minute, boys. I want you to meet my son, Roy. Roy, I want you to meet these boys. Uh, Muggs, uh, Glimpy. I'm afraid I've forgotten your other names. I'm Hoybe. I'm Rocky. How are you? Hi, Hello. Howdy, Well, son, what happened to your hand? Oh, it's nothing. I, I just sprained it. I've invited these boys to use the gymnasium. Oh, really? Gee, I did. Well, what's the harm? You never use it, Roy. Oh, I guess it's all right. Oh, Thanks, Kate. Yeah. Okay. Let's get out warm up a little bit. Get a little chilly here. All right. So, Fancy Pants, Pants Sharpie. See you, kid. See you later. Uh, Roy, I want to have a little talk with you. I haven't had a chance to tell you before. But last night I was attacked and robbed. You were? Yes, and those boys you just met not only recovered my pocketbook, but saved me from a possible beating. Oh, I see. Well, I'm sorry if I was rude to them. I thought you would be. Sit down. Roy, is anything bothering you? Are you in any kind of trouble? No, of course not. What do you ask? Oh, I was just wondering, that's all. Hey, you guys. You notice the bandage on that Cortland kid's hand? Yeah, so what? Said he sprained it. Maybe he's cutting out too many paper dolls lately. Maybe so. He could have done it hitting a brick wall, too. Are you saying he's the guy who took a poke at you last night in the alley? I'm not saying nothing. I'm doing a lot of thinking. Ah, oh, Muggs, get back on your heels from meeting that swell gal. Hey, Muggs, you know something? You never told me you were such a lady killer. Before your brother John went away, he was so much alike. But since then, well, you seem to have changed. Honest, Dad, there's nothing the matter with me. It's just that I... Oh, stop worrying about me, will you? You're staying out late at night. Everybody stays up late these oh, days. not preaching, Roy. I, I'm just trying to be friendly. Oh, I know that most boys have their troubles sometimes. Or perhaps you've been disappointed or something. Or perhaps that... We both miss your brother. Could he, you know what I mean. Sure, I know what you mean. I guess I don't deserve a dad like you. Well, good morning, Captain. Oh. Come in. Good morning, Mr. Gordon. How are you? Oh, pretty good. You happen to be in the neighborhood? Sort of drop by and say hello to you. Fine. All right, where are you going? Just going out. I want you to meet Captain Matthews. Oh, hello, Roy. Just paying a little friendly visit is all. Glad to know you. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll be going. Well, Captain, let's sit down. Thanks. How have you been? Fine, thanks. Just the same. I'd like to know those guys out at Mug Cortland. Ah, what are you worried about? It ain't our funeral. It ain't our funeral, huh? They're just ruining our name, that's all. Just slanderizing us. First thing you know, people will be going around calling us the East Side Kids. You're right. I never thought of it that way. You never think, period. Oh, Sorry to intrude, boys. 
But Captain Matthews is anxious to get a more detailed description of the fellows who attacked me last night, so... Oh, no, 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 no. Now, listen, boys. Mr. Corkman here has pretty well convinced me you're innocent. But I thought you might be able to give me some sort of a hint, uh, some sort of a description which I could, uh, sort of... Well, Mox like. thinks, uh, What are you drooling about when he says I'm gonna bust you right in the lonics? Wait, but did I say anything? Yeah. Look, oh, we don't know nothing. We ain't gonna inscribe nobody. Yeah, but listen, boys. These muggers have been working right here in your own neighborhood. I thought as a matter of pride that... What do you mean? Well, You're trying to say we ain't got no pride in our neighborhood? Look, we got lots of pride. More pride than you think. <laughs> well, all right, boys. Forget it. All right, boys. I'm sorry that I was a part of this intrusion. Yeah, I like that. Pride. Right. What is somebody like those coppers? What do you... Oh, why don't you keep quiet? Go on back and punch your bag. Okay. I think we'd better get out of here. Yeah, but Muggs, old man Corlin didn't mean nothing personal. I know that, but I got a lot of thinking of doing a... Imagine we ought to go someplace else and do it. Yeah, let's go. What are you doing? You told me to punch the bag. Yeah, yeah, I told you to punch the bag. So what? So the bag punched back. Get out of here. What's the matter with you? I'm going to talk to you. Well, did you get some servants for your party yet? No, I suppose it's the war. I haven't been able to find a cook or a maid. Uh -huh. Oh, boys, I'd like for you to meet Lieutenant Andre Dupre. I'm sorry, but I don't know your real name. Oh, Muggs, Muggs, just Muggs, capital Muggs. It is an honor and a pleasure. Monsieur Muggs, my gentleman. You too, Monsieur. Right. What's with the thing there? Do you mean you could run that shindig with just a cook and a maid? Yes, I, I suppose so. That's all I wanted to know. Let's go, boys. See, See you later, Miss Cole. Let's go, Miss Cole. See the America. <laughs> Twelve bucks? Is that all? That's right. I thought that old guy would have at least a grand on him. Yeah. Oh, great thing. Here, yeah, kid. Forget it. Hey, what is this forget it routine? The way you refuse money, you think you were working with us for the fun of it. Maybe I am. I'll get you, kid. What plays? Who are you, anyhow? Look, Crafty, I don't ask you any questions, so don't ask me any. Understand? Ma chérie, your music it is divine. Thank you, Andre. It makes me long to fly away with you to my villa on the Riviera, to my beloved France. You make it all sound so romantic, Andre. Help. What do you mean, ain't no hired help? No, Mr. Cortman, my old lady here, that is, my mother used to be a cook at the Biltmore's. Yeah, and my mother used to work for the Whitley's. She was the best chambermaid they had. Lemme. I was the housekeeper, if you must know. You told me chambermaid. Why don't you keep your mouth shut? And seeing as how you've been so nice to our young ones, we thought... See, Mr. Cortland, we didn't want your daughter to be disappointed about that party she wanted to throw. Well, I'm very, very glad to meet the mothers of such unusual boys. I'll have you meet my daughter. Come right along. Mm. Hey, look at this house, huh? Excuse me just a moment, please. Certainly. I shall fight for my country. My honor. 
But more I should fight for you, my little white dog. Oh, Mrs. Cutler. Hello. Louise, will you come out in the hall a moment, please? Yes, Father. Excuse me, Andre. Yes, certainly. Louise, these are the mothers of uh, Muggs and Plimpy. They've kindly offered to help out. I'm Mrs. McGinnis. How do you do, Mrs. McGinnis? I'm Mrs. McCloskey. Very glad to know you. Happy to know you. Well, I have to be running along, if you'll excuse me. Goodbye. It's so nice of you to offer to do this. Oh, don't mention oh, it. Oh, that's perfectly all right. Would you care to look about now? Oh, as much I would, and there's nothing like getting the job started. Well, that's this right. Way, please. Oh, get a load of flamingo. Show off. I think you're out, kid. Too much competition. What do you mean? That guy wouldn't offer competition to your bangy. If that's the way your bangy looks, I take that last crack back. Out to the kitchen. Ma, this is no place for you, Brock. Ma. Come on, come on. Okay, Ma, see you come later. On. No, dear, of course I'm not. I'm phoning from a, a drugstore. Yes, 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 I am. Why not? But you don't know. Yes, yes, of course. I taught English just as good as we do. Don't be silly. Nobody taught English as good as we do. It arouses my curiosity. Hmm, a gentleman. What'd you say your name was? A Lieutenant Andre Dupre. At your service. Hey, Andre, you hear about that guy who was walking on the seaside of the street with the breeze on the side there? At your service? Hey, uh, beg your pardon? French. Well, no, 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 that is not the French. Ah, yes, yes, yes. That is the French as Gleepy speaks it. Arabian boy. You are Miss Cordless for relations, uh, no? Yes? Yeah, no. But if you stay around here long enough, you're going to see a lot of us from now on. Oh. I take the good with the bad. How about the medium? Hey, Andrew, come here. I want to talk to you. Uh, what is that medal there for? Distinguished service. You mean extinguished, don't you? No. You know something? My brother got two medals. He did? What for? Well, he got one for jumping off the Brooklyn Bridge. And what did he get the other one for? For getting killed when he landed. Hey! Well, where's your old shoulder pad? Please. <coughs> control yourself, Lumpy. Control yourself. Hey, Andre. Still, don't forget about the guy in the CSI with the previous on the street at your service. Uh, what? Still French. Still Arabian. You leave everything to us. You haven't got a thing to worry about. Well, is it a deal, Mom? It is that, and we're starting right now, and there's lots of work to be done. You better go on. Okay, we'll see you later. Bye. 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 Well, we better get to work. I'm sorry I kept you waiting so long, Andre. For you, I would wait forever. But now, I must go. I have business at the embassy. Then I'll see you this evening. And this evening, you'll announce our engagement. We? Oui? Perhaps. My sherry. Zigzag Club, two thirty one house. I wear it, my new act. Mm. Oh, uh, say, baby, you got a little money for the cabbie. I'm a little fresh out of fun. What, again? Where do you know how those things are? Say, why don't you get a steady job? Uh, I think maybe I have got one. 
Well, that's good news. Yeah. Uh, Dick G. Say, about this act you mentioned, what sort of an act is it? Oh, it's a brand new idea. Very original. <laughs> well, it better not be with any dame. You get that, don't you? Oh, now, Maisie, dear, you know me. Yes, I know you. Oh, now, that's a fine way to talk. And I always play square with you. Well, can you pitch it at? And maybe we should tell that other thing. You making reference to Miss Cortland? Well, she ought to know, shouldn't she? I thought maybe we should keep it a secret. Hey, look, what does that mean? Fantastic. I don't know, it probably means she does a fan dance. Oh, without her clothes on, huh? What do you mean, without her clothes on? She's no cover. No cover. No cover charge. That means you don't pay nothing for the tablecloth. Now, come on, we got an important mission to do. Who wants the tablecloth? Hey, Danny, Danny, Danny. Huh? Look, this fight is Tuesday night. Snub Pollard. Hey, oh, he's good. Oh, hey, 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 fella, look. The Cortman kid. Well, what do you know? Hey, how do you figure a rich kid like him playing around with those guys? I don't figure it. It don't add up. Wait till Muggs hears about this. Well, maybe Muggs was right about him after all. Yeah, hey, you think he was. Come on, let's go back to the club. Right, let's go. Hello, boys. Hi, Miss Cortland. Hello. I've got something important to tell you. What is it? Well, it's uh, kind of personal. Come right in. It's about the, uh... Sit down. Oh, sure, thanks. It's about that lieutenant friend of yours. You mean my fiancé? Yeah, yeah, that's right. You don't really expect to marry that guy, do you? Well, I'd plan to keep our engagement a secret, but... I may announce it tonight at the party. No, Miss Cortland. Marriage is a very confiscated and detrimental affair. You can't rush into it too headstrong. <laughs> Mark, what are you talking about? Well, the guy may not be exactly right for you. I mean, you're a very nice girl. He may not be your type. Mark's just mm -hmm. trying to tell you the guy's a phony. He's out after your money. He's even got another girl. Oh, please, boys. Who gave you the right to intrude on my well, private affairs? We didn't mean this truth, Miss Portland. We just telling you the truth. I don't want to hear any nonsense. Well, that's the way you feel about it, eh? Guess we better go. We probably made a mistake. You won't be mad at us, will you? Well, no, but I think you boys better keep your gymnasium. Maybe you're right. Bye now. Bye. How do you like that? She just wasn't in the mood, I guess. Ah, dames are all alike, dumb like me. Impossible. Just the same, she ain't gonna marry that guy because I got other plans. Ah, uh, it doesn't look like Mugs or Glumpy's coming. Say, hey, you know, I wonder if they went back to the gym. Maybe we ought to go look for them, huh? All right. You don't have to look for us. Hey, Mugs, we've been waiting for you. We found out some circumstantial evidence against the Cortland kid. Yeah, we saw the kid playing pool over in Finks with those two characters we tangled with last night. Did, huh? Maybe we better call this meet in order. Yeah. What are you doing? Taking down your water. Oh! Shut up! So you saw this Cortland kid playing pool in Finks with a couple of Jacobos. So what? That don't prove nothing bona fide against them. It's it's not. Not. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Dummy up. Look, kids like him don't pal around with those guys for nothing. They must be up to something. Maybe you and I should tell the cops. We ain't gonna tell them nothing. Not until we get the goods on them. In the meantime, another matter has arisen which demands our immediate attention. Mr. and Mrs. Barnes, may I present Lieutenant Andre Dupre? Madame. It is a pleasure, I assure you. Sir? Here, here, what's going on here? Don't you know we need those things? Now, if you're going to stay at the other end of the kitchen, please. On you go, every one of you. Go on, come on, come on. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out Mrs. Russell, may I present the Lieutenant Andre Dupre? Madame? Sit down there. And Mr. Van Sickle, Lieutenant Dupre. Sit Dupre. Look for yourself. The American women are so beautiful. Why, that low down double. Look at him. I'll tear him apart. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Better to use a little finesse. You can't rush into this thing. But he can't get away with Excuse this. Excuse me, no, son. can't be precipitate. Hiya, Ma. Oh, that's, uh, that's Miss, uh, Miss, Miss Maid. 
Yeah, Miss Maid, the new maid, she's going to serve the drinks, you know. Come on, oh. uh, give me that uh, apron what? up there. Uh, give me those silver foxes. Quiet, quick. genius at work. going to serve the drinks, you know, new maid, new maid. Yeah, put that apron on quick. Give her the drinks, Ma. Great maid. Got it from the agency. Five percent down. Remember, don't be too melodrastic. This, we got to see. This is our giant. Yeah. Cocktail? Oh, me. Happy you. deep. I see. Andre, what's the matter? You seem so nervous. Don't you feel well? Oh, oh. No, I, I feel fine, thank you. Oh, but I, I just remember a most important telephone call I must make. You will excuse me, please. Of course, you know where the phone is. Indeed. Just listen, I can explain. I think your loss of accent explains a lot. Huh, I can explain a lot more. Please don't. Just take your brawl or whatever it is outside. Dear, you don't understand. I understand that. enough. Please leave. But my little white dove, I... What am I, a black Menorca? Oh, you. You fixed everything up fine, didn't you? You just ruined my whole career. Oh, I'll ruin your whole career. I say so myself, you handle that very diplomatically and energetically. Well, he deserved it. Nice kid. Good to her mother. Never goes home. Nice work, boys. You mean you're not mad? Oh, of course not. You handle it with skill. I'm great. Hey, you know, we're thinking of forming a club to take care of Daffy Dings. You gonna pass the hat around? Yeah. Well, start passing it. What kind of way is that to talk to a blossoming debutante? Clubs. Miss Corbin, if I said anything to offend you, I thank you. Dinner's all ready, man. Thank you. I hope these brats haven't been causing you any trouble. Oh, no, of course not. Far from it. Hey, Ma, in case you run short of dish rags or something, why, there's a... Oh, and speaking about dish rags, come on, it's a good idea. Into the kitchen, both of you. Why don't you keep your big mouth shut? Well, actually, I didn't say nothing. I regret to announce that our good friend, Lieutenant Andre Dupre, was suddenly called away on important business. I hope you'll accept his sincere apologies. And now if you go to the dining room, you'll find your face cards on the table. Hey, gang. We're getting ready to stow the chow. Stow the chow? Hmm, something like that. We've got a little business to attend to. What happened to your young lieutenant, Louise? As your friend Muggs would say, the lieutenant was a phone. Well, that's what I suspected all the time. <laughs> you better not get into any mischief, any of you. We're not going to get into any. We might cause a little low. You, you know. better not, dear. Yes, oh, we were all lost. We're still going to get into Save yourself now. Save me some. Well, uh, uh, upstairs. <coughs> they look out. Don't look like it. Maybe well, that one. That's it. John Corton live here? Yeah, he lives here, shorty. Yeah, don't give me that shorty stuff. Don't be bitter about it. Yeah, listen, here, I got a telegram for him. I'll take it. Fine here. Right. There's no smoking around here. I ain't smoking. Got a cigarette in your mouth, haven't you? Sure, I got shoes on my feet, but I ain't walking. Thanks. This is very important. See that it gets it right away. From the water pump. The water pump, eh? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yes, I had a letter from uh, John Jr. last week. 
He's just been made a first lieutenant. Oh, you must be very proud, Mr. Courtney. I am indeed. Uh, Roy tried to enlist too, but they turned him down on account of his eyes. There's nothing the matter with my eyesight. What are you doing, Mom? I'm fixing the turkey. That's good. <laughs> the, uh, Thomas Cotton liked Seaman Hall for a minute. Is there anything wrong, son? Oh, no, no. Not exactly. Just like to talk to him. Oh, all right. Yeah, sure. Hey, Papa, look at this cap. Yeah, nice one. Hey, Hoyt, what do you think of this boy? Quite the buck. You want it? Sure. Oh, you dope. That half this cap that was on the kid. Yeah. Well, your mother said you wanted to see me. Yeah, Mr. Courtney, he's got a telegram for you. I didn't think you'd want to read it in front of all those people. Oh, that's very considerate of you, Mugs. Thanks. Bad news. I deserve a break like that, Mr. Corton. A fellow like you. Just don't figure. Could be worse, I guess. I still have one son left. Oh, you mean, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. We've got one son left. Let's go see him up. Shut up. Let's talk about that later. Oh, maybe such bad news about his son. The one that's a flyer. Oh, oh geez, that's a shame. He wants his feet. my daughter's party. I'll be all right. Just help me upstairs to my room, please. Okay, Mr. Colton. Back to Dave. Give him a hand. Sure. Monster, take it easy now. Steady. Excuse me a minute, please. Which room is yours, Mr. Colton? Right here. We just had a faint spell, Miss Corton. We didn't call you because he has us not disturbed the party. Don't be alarmed, dear. It's nothing serious. Just the same, I'll call Dr. Miller. Hello, is Dr. Miller in? May I speak to him, please? Hello, doctor. This is Louise Cortland. I'm sorry to disturb you. My father doesn't feel very well. Could you come right over? Thank you. What did you find? This cat. He wore it last night. Yeah, that proves he's a mugger, all right. Didn't I tell Mr. Corbin about this? I have to what just happened. He'd probably kick over if he found out his other kid was a crook. Ah, uh, maybe Roy ain't as bad as we paint him and be. Oh, look, he's a mugger, ain't he? Maybe so. You know, they had rich kids that kind of got bored with life, you know, and they just went into a thing like that, the excitement they got out of it. You mean this Corbin kid's being pushed around by something? Like being bored with life? That's the idea. Might even be dragged into it by a few other guys. Yeah, I get it. Hey, maybe we could help Roy. His old men would even have to know about it. What do you think I've been trying to say, stupid? I'm not stupid. No, you're not stupid. You just got as short as your corrugations in the cerebellum. Oh, that's different. Hey, Mugs, is that contagious? I don't know. I read it in a book. Mm. Pardon me, please. Fine, 
time for him to be going out. You better investigate that. I'll give you three guesses where he's going. What's the use of guessing? Let's tail him. need about 20 more pointers, you'll be all right, you know that. Look good to me. Hey, what took you so long, kid? What's the idea of that soup and fish? He looks pretty, doesn't he? Never mind that. I came down here tonight to tell you fellas I'm through. What do you mean, through? Hold your steam. You can't walk out on us like that. Be yourself. Hey, Lefty, look out there. What do you kids want around here? We didn't come in to shoot pool. We'd like to have a little talk with Roy here. You're coming with us. I am not. Oh, yes, you are. Leave him. Grab him quick, Trying to do a wreck this joint? Ah, shut up, will you? We were minding our own business when those guys jumped us. We ought to sue you. Go ahead, What you guys want with that kid, Roy? Me, your business, Lefty boy. Oh, yeah? Let me work him over, will you, Lefty? Nah, not yet. Come on, let's take him along with us. Study my clothes. <laughs> What do you tramps think you're getting away with? You, pal. You haven't anything on me. That's what you think. Who are those two geraniums have been hanging out in the pool room with? It's none of your business. Take your hands Take it easy. Me. All right, bring them down to club. Hey, wait a minute. We can't take him to the club. The cops might come in. That's right. We'll bring him down to his old man's place. Wait a minute. Where's Skinny? Oh. Must still be back in the pool room. Hey, Glippy and hurry. Go look him up. Okay, okay Chief. Chief. Let's go. If you don't come peacefully, carry him. Come on. Come on. Let's take a walk. Hey, Lefty. Hey, Lefty. Look out there. Tie him up. We'll be right back. Gonna make a phone call. Oh. What am I doing this in kind of your father? You leave my father out of it. Uh-huh. You know, with the evidence we got on you, we could put you in jail behind the bars. Go ahead. My father will have me out just like that. Don't be so exorbitant about it. Now, you're the million-dollar kid. Nobody can touch you. Nobody can lay a hand on you, huh? Hey, Dave, give me those gloves. What? Take off that obligatory suit and coat there. I don't want to soil any garments when I'm doing my work. You ask for it. I ask for it. <laughs> Before I get through with you, you'll be sorry you didn't use this gymnasium for playgrounds instead of those pool rooms and streets. You ain't going to be able to see nothing. Come on, tie those gloves. Oh, yeah, my ear. What are you making with those fancy nails? Hey, what's the matter? Your hands cold. Where's Skinny? We couldn't find him. Yeah, we looked all over him, too. We'll take care of that later. What's going on here? Oh, we're going to have a little boxing match. He's going to fight you? Good what's the matter? You crazy? You're going to get murdered. Don't forget, Mark is a king's very rules. I can't stand blood. Me neither. Come here, boy. Let's get out here where we've got a little room. Oh, oh, don't need any room. Oh, oh, no, I don't need any room, but he's liable to need a little room when he falls. See you, Mark. Mark, Mark. 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 Mark.
For instance, why are you hanging out with those two gelads at Fink's pool? I don't know. I don't know why I did it. I didn't have to. My dad gives me plenty of money. I do what those guys. What were their names? Oh, well, look. I may be rotten, but I'm no squealer. You're getting into this thing pretty deep, Roy. There's something that happened that I think you ought to know. It's about your brother. What about my brother? He's been killed. And the only son your father's got left. I think it's about time you straightened yourself out. Hello, boys. Call them. What are you doing prowling around this time of night? You're supposed to be sick. Remember that spell you had? Why? I've been waiting up. There's something I wanted to tell you. About John. Yeah, I... I know. She was a swell brother. Better son to you than... than me. He's trying to say Mr. Corner is that... Uh, you know what he means. Yes. I know. Father, what are you doing down here? Why, well, I just came down to say good night to the boys. Well, you shouldn't be out of bed. Roy, someone telephoned you by the name of Lefty. Lefty? Oh, that's a friend of mine. Sure, good old Lefty. He said if any talking was done, something might happen to Skinny. Skinny? Oh, yeah, 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 Skinny. Well, uh, see, sometimes they call Skinny Lefty and Lefty Skinny. It's, it's very confusing. Roy, do you have a friend by the name of Lefty? No, he's no friend of mine. Holy, he's my friend. I know him. Come on, Father, you better get back to bed. Good night, boys. Good night, boys. It appears like this guy Lefty is holding up how skinny as a hostage. Are you with us or against us? Of course I'm with you. They live over on the west side. I'll take you there. That's fine. Boys, we're going over on the west side and have a little fracas. Take off those tools of destruction. Okay. Now you get right back to bed. And don't you disobey the doctor's orders again. I won't. Good night. Let's go. Hello? I'd like to speak to Captain Matthews, please. Come on, you 
All right, now, you boys, come on. Who's the other member of the outfit? Captain, I told you 33 times, there is no other member. Shut up. Cops is never satisfied. You I want the name of the other mugger. It was I. Okay, Moitzi, I'll take my medicine. You're Roy Portland, aren't you? That's right, Captain. But he ain't no member of nothing. He's just got the loot nation to the Corindium Collium Vertebrate Air. What? Yeah, he fell on his head when he was a baby. This looks serious for you, Roy. Captain, Roy comes from a good family. He's got a great old man. You know, you met him. He's got a swell brother. He's a flyer in his service. As he was, he killed him. He killed these people. His sister, she's a regular peach. Roy here sides the littler, but off the beaten path, why? Just did it because he was looking for excitement, like his brother. I can't let this old man know about it because just break him up and he's really a sweet guy. Roy here is too. Regular thoroughbred if there ever was one. That is, he is since we beat some sense into him. If he'd done anything wrong, he didn't really mean anything bad by it, Captain. Honest, he didn't. I understand. I'm going to release you on your own recognizance. Later, where well, there is such a thing as a suspended sentence. Especially if these boys can plead your case to the court as well as they have to me. Hey, you hear what he said? Now, there's someone waiting here to take you home. Dad. Hello, Roy. I think you boys all know how I feel. Uh, all right. Hey, Mug. That was a very good deed of yours. Oh, we were just protecting our own interests. You no, know, Captain, I never liked cops very much. I'm beginning to realize I was wrong. But you're really a regular guy. I like to shake your hand. Well, thank you, Mug. Subsequently, this event will go down into the history of the East Side Social Improvement Club as their greatest deed. Signed, Muggs McGinnis, President and Treasurer. You got that, Secretary? Right, Mr. President. As well. And there's one more. Muggs, Muggs! Cousin Ivy, how are you? You come say hello to me? Be quiet. What's the matter with you? I just found out that you are not my cousin. Who told you that? When I long talk with my parents. They told me that 